everyone uh, Brian from Witch Doctor how's everyone doing um, this test we're looking at seating depth of the primer in the primer pocket um, there's it's a hotly debated topic lots of people saying uh, hey you got to follow Sammy spec uh, some people saying you got to seat to the top of the primer pocket no matter you know uh, no matter what the Sammy spec says just seat that primer all the way to the top uh, and then some people have some idea about, well, there's a, a feel that you have to have to seat primer. So, um, of course, the, you know, all of it is, you know, speculative about what actually works the best. So I went ahead and just decided to go ahead and run a test. Um, just FYI, this is the SAMI spec. You can go onto their website, uh, their gov government website in the United States and uh, pull this out of their manual. I think it's page 36. Uh, essentially what they say is, you know, seat that thing about eight thousandths um, uh, beyond the face of the case head. And they give some specifications around, here's some typical small rifle primer sizes and, you know, small rifle primer, you know, pocket, primer pocket depths. Um, so basically what I did is um, went ahead and uh, tested different primer seating depths. So... Um, what I ended up doing was uh, grabbing a BR4 primer, measuring it. Um, BR4 primers, uh, they are 0.1135 um, of an inch uh, in height. Um, and went ahead and grabbed my uh, Norma 6PPC brass and went ahead and just used my calipers here to measure the depth of the primer pocket. What you do is you take this area back here, stick that in the primer pocket, press down, and then you get your measurement. So 0.121 um, inch there. So uh, that tells me that, you know, okay, 0.121 inch is the depth of the pocket. Um, and then I know the depth of the um, of the BR4, the height of the BR4 at that point. So um, I ended up doing some testing uh, with the seating depths um, because I have this, it's a wonderful PMA ball bearing seating, uh, primer seating tool, but it doesn't have any indicators on it um, in terms of, you know, hey, where, where do you turn to uh, adjust a thousandths, for example. So I had to do some testing with it and I found out that, you know, right here, um, with this brass, with that size primer, this will seat it flush to the face of the case head. Uh, as I turn it this way, that gives me two thousandths um, into the face of the case head, um, all the way up to, I think, about 13 thousandths was the maximum I can really get out of the BR4. Um, well, it turns out if you do the calculations um, about eight and a half to nine thousandths would put the primer right up to uh, all the way into that primer pocket and all the way up to the ceiling of the primer pocket so um, going up above that like let's say up to thirteen thousandths you'd be basically crushing the primer and, and you can see it on the outside of the uh, primer itself there's kind of some scoring marks and stuff like that you can tell you're really pushing it in really hard Okay, so what I ended up doing is shooting five shot groups at 100 yards with different primer seating depths. Um, I, the different depths were flush with the face of the case head, um, three thousandths into the primer pocket, six thousandths into, nine thousandths into, and thirteen thousandths into. So I hit that Sammy spec line with the nine thousandths, and then I also kind of hit the crush uh, area with the thirteen thousandths. Um, basically um, checked all the primer pockets to make sure the depths were uniform they were um, I did not um, ream the pockets or anything like that so they were all standard um, factory pocket sizes all of them were uniform which was great um, I used the CCI BR4 primer which again has a 0.1135 height 
Different primers of different height though, CCI 450 has a 0.122 height. So a, a primer like CCI 450 would sit flush with this type of, uh, with this size primer pocket. Uh, if you went ahead and pushed it in more, uh, it would it would crush it. So um, so be be aware of that that different primers have different depths. Um, okay, and I loaded five rounds of each of the five different depths along with two fowlers, and then went to the range and fired all five of the five shot groups on the same day under the same conditions. Um, I did this on five separate occasions, so that I shot five five shot groups of each of the five seating depths, which totaled 125 rounds on record targets and the 10 fowlers, because I shot two fowlers for each um, session. Um, the groups were shot in different order each time, so I changed um, the order. So you can see, if you can see here, the numbers on here, one, two, three, four, five, and then I have five, one, two, three, four, four, five, one, two, three. What I ended up doing is I shot this first during this string and then I shot this first during this string, and then I shot this first during this string, and that first during that string. Um, and I have a I have a fifth target that um, I had to use because I ran out of uh, targets here, but uh, but that's how I did it so I can eliminate what's called the order effects or any trend in the data that's a result of like ordering the firing in a certain sequence. Some people will say, well, the barrel was warm, so you got poorer accuracy, or some people even say the barrel was warm, you got better accuracy. So anyway, I ended up just eliminating order effects by, by doing it that way. Um, I used my standard uh, Bentress stock, which right now is a Bat uh, Nouveau on a Bat stock, a Night Force Fix 42 target uh, Flavia Whisper trigger that I had set below one ounce. Um, it's a Brux Light Varmint variable, six millimeter, 14 twist. Um, cut to make 10 and a half pounds. The chambering was a 6 PPC uh, with a 262 neck. So I did turn the necks down on this brass to 0 0.0083 so I can get about two and a half thousandths neck clearance. Um, prior to the test, I made sure that I tuned a load that was shooting very consistent and very well and that it had a, t a, a wide tune window. Um, and so I used Paul Porosky's PRP Custom Patriot bullets um, an excellent bullet, very uniform, um, uh, seated about 13 thousandths off the lands. I used 29.4 grains of N133 and three to four thousandths neck tension on it. Um, that was the very well-tuned load, um, and so I just used that for this entire test. Um, after each day of firing, so after I fired a, you know, a full set of five shot groups with each uh, different depth, um, I cleaned the barrel with of carbon and copper. Um, I annealed the brass full length size with the bullet central micron sizing die. Um, and then I actually stopped cleaning primer pockets now that, uh, I don't know if you saw the video um, uh, that I uh, published here on YouTube, but uh, it turns out, you know, cleaning the primer pockets really doesn't aid in precision at all. It's kind of a waste of time. So I decided I'm just not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> Um, I threw the powder from a Bryant thrower, which is an extremely reliable thrower, the best one you can find on the market now. Um, and then seeded the bullets with a Bullet Central Micron seating die and KM Arbor Press. You've probably seen the, the materials that I use routinely um, in some of my other videos. Um, I used this, the, the PMA um, ball bearing tool, to seat the uh, primers and uh, basically. Um, use the indicator that I created um, after sort of testing different uh, uh, seating depths. Um, all the shooting took place at the Tacoma Rifle and Revolver Club in University Place, Washington, United States. Um, the rifle rested on a Lindsay front rest um, and rear rest. Lab radar I used to gather velocity. Um, I measured group size center to center. Um, in addition to group size, I also looked at the shape of the group. Um, to see like what, what shape is it? Was it a horizontal group, vertical, circle, square? Uh, was it a four in one, you know, where you get four in one hole and then one pops out, which is basically a flyer group, um, and measured that too and, 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 uh, cut and uh, um, captured that data.
Okay, well, let's look at some results. Um, basically, what I did is I did what's called an analysis of variance. That's a statistical test that tells me um, if the different groups that I um, have, um, and the groups here are, you know, the primer was seated flush uh, to the case head, uh, three thousandths in, six thousandths in, nine thousandths in, thirteen thousandths in. Those are my five different groups. Um, the count is five because I shot five uh, five shot groups for each of those. Um, I took got the average of the actual um, group size, and um, it was there was a statistically significant difference in this analysis of variance. Um, and so, and of note the SAMI spec size and the size where, uh, I'm sorry, the SAMI spec depth and the depth where the primer pocket would seat right up to the uh, ceiling of the primer pocket. My aggregate for, for five of those five shot groups was 0.1992. So it was certainly a better aggregate than everything else. And I expected that um, as I did my post hoc statistical analyses that I was gonna find that, which is what I did. I did what's called a Tukey's uh, honestly significant di difference test to see out of all these groups what was really different. What turned out to be d different was um, the 9,000 seating depth was better than flush and better than crush. The crush, I'm just going to refer to 13,000 as the crush group. Um, so definitely um, seating 9,000 in is going to be better than flush or crush any given day. I, I do not recommend seating flush or crush. <laughs> um, it, the, the numbers actually were the worst in those two conditions, as you can see here. Um, I conducted an analysis of variance, or I'll just call it ANOVA for short, um, on velocity, and there was no statistically significant difference. Um, all the velocities were within like 33, 36 feet per second to around 33, 47 feet per second, so there's really not much variation there um, statistically, so there was no um, statistical difference. Um, I looked at the standard deviations too, and, and, and the ANOVA basically did not find any statistically significant difference in those. However, it is noted that the um, 9 thousandths um, seating uh, did get the lowest uh, standard deviation, which was in single digits. And let's take a look at I mentioned that I took a look at the different group shapes. And interestingly, the 9,000 seating, 80% of those groups were circles. I mean, they, they, as you can see here, they just grouped really well. This is 9,000. So they all kind of formed small circles, um, many of them in the one low 1,000s, actually, a couple in the low 1,000s just nice little circles and if you look at the others you see like a lot of horizontal you see vertical vertical oh they got a hole there and flush that was a good one for flush but overall um, I looked at the pattern and uh, nine thousandths had 80 percent circle so it had the least variation out of all the other different primer depths um, all the other different primer depths had a lot of a lot of variation, like flush had two at horizontal, one vertical, one four and one, one circle. Um, six thousandths had two horizontals, two verticals and one four and one. Um, crushed had two horizontal, one vertical, two four and one. So crushed gives you flyers for sure. So um, anyway, so in interesting data looking at the shape too. All right, so in conclusion, um, what I'm seeing here is um, I would say following that SAMI spec, if you have sort of SAMI spec um, uh, primer pockets and primer sizes, um, if you don't, let's say you reamed your primer pockets for uniformity, um, go ahead and measure them. Uh, measure your primer, and then I recommend seeding that to... Um, uh, all the way to the top of the um, primer uh, pocket, basically. Um, if, if you have it in SAMI spec, then yeah, definitely go for it. Seat it to like eight or nine thousandths. You're probably not going to be disappointed there. Um, I definitely do not recommend 
seeding it flush or crush. Um, those were the worst uh, outcomes that we saw. Um, and so what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna continue the testing on this because I am interested to see with that CCI 450, you know, kind of seating, it'll seat right, you know, right, right up into the ceiling of the um, primer pocket, but it will be flush with the face of the case head. So I am gonna do some additional p testing here to see is it is it important not to have it flush with the case head, or is it important to have the primer, you know, seated all the way to the top uh, of the uh, primer pocket. So we'll, we'll, we'll answer some more questions here, but for now, the conclusion is uh, don't seat flush, don't seat crush. Uh, if you do have SAMI spec on yours, you know, seat it to that SAMI spec, eight or nine thousandths, which should get that primer um, pretty close to the top. Uh, if not, just go ahead and seat it to the top. Um, and then, you know, obviously, as with anything, test it out and see if it works well for you. All right, everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in and take care. And it's a uh, holiday season here in December in the United States. So happy holidays to you if you celebrate the holidays. Please subscribe, like, and share.